Hey everyone, welcome to this CUBE conversation featuring Dremio. I'm your host, Lisa Martin, and I'm excited today to be joined by Mark Lyons, the VP of Product Management at Dremio. Mark, thanks for joining us today. Hey Lisa, thank you for having me. Looking forward to the talk. Yeah, talk to me about what's going on at Dremio. I, I had the chance to talk to your Chief Product Officer, Tomer Sharan, in a couple months ago, but talk to us about what's going on. Yeah, I remember that at reInvent. Um, it's been an exciting few months since reInvent here at Dremio. And just uh, uh, in the new year, we raised our Series E. And since then, we ran into our subsurface event, which we had over seven, 8,000 registrants um, and attendees. And then we announced our Dremio Cloud product generally available, including uh, Dremio Sonar, which is a SQL query engine, and Dremio Arctic in public preview, which is a meta store for the lake house. Great, and we're going to dig into both of those. I, I saw that over 400 million raised in that Series E, raising the valuation of Jumio to 2 billion. So a lot of growth and momentum going on at the company, I'm sure. If we think about businesses in any industry, they've made large investments in data warehouses, proprietary data warehouses. Talk to me about historically what they've been able to achieve, but then what some of those bottlenecks are that they're running into. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, and my background is actually uh, in the data warehouse space. I spent over the last eight, maybe close to 10 years. And we've seen this shift go on from the traditional enterprise data warehouse to the data lake. And the, the last couple of years has really been the time of the cloud data warehouse. And there's been a large amount of adoption of cloud data warehouses. But fundamentally, you know, they still come with a lot of the same challenges that have always existed with the data warehouse, which is, uh, first of all, you have to load your data into it. Um, so that data is coming from lots of different sources. In many cases, it's landing in a files in the data lake, like um, a repository like S3 first. And, and then there's a loading process, right? An ETL process. And those pipelines have to be maintained and, and stay uh, operational. Um, and typically as as the data warehouse uh, life cycle of processing moves on, the scope of the data that consumers get to access gets smaller and smaller. Um, the control of that data gets tighter and change process gets heavier and it goes from quick changes of adding a column or adding a, a field to a file to uh, you know days, if not weeks for businesses to modify their data pipelines and, and test new scenarios, offer new features in the application or answer new questions that the business is interested, you know, from an analytics standpoint. So uh, typically, you know, we see the same thing, even with these cloud data warehouses, a, a, the scope of the data shrinks, the time to get answers gets longer. Um, and when new engines come along, you know, the same story we see, and this is going on right now in the data warehouse space, there's new data warehouses that are coming and they say, well, we're a thousand fast times faster than the last data warehouse. And then it's like, okay, great. But what's the process? The process is to migrate all your data to the new data warehouse, right? And, and that comes with all the same baggage. Again, it's a proprietary format that you load your data into. So I think people are you know, ready for a change um, from that. People are not only ready for a change, but as every company has to become a data company these days and access to real-time data is no longer a nice to have, it's absolutely essential to be uh, the ability to scale, the ability to harness the value from as much data as possible and to do so fast is really table stakes for any organization. How is Dremio helping customers in that situation to operationalize their data? Yeah, uh, so you know that's what I was so intrigued and loved uh, about Dremio when when I joined uh, three, four, five months back. Coming from the warehouse space, when I first saw the product, I was just like, "Oh my gosh, this is so much easier for folks. They can they can access a, a larger scope of their data faster." Which, to your point, like is is table stakes for all organizations these days. They need to be able to analyze uh, data um, sooner. Sooner is the better. Data data has a half life, right? Like it decays. The value of de data decays over time. Um, so typically, the most valuable data is the newest data, and that all depends on what we're, you know, the industries we're talking about, the types of data, and the use cases. But it's always basically true that newer data is more valuable, and they need to be able to analyze as much of it as possible. It can't be uh, the story can't be um, no. We have to wait you know, weeks or months to get a new data source or the story can't be, 
you know, uh, that data that includes seasonality, you know, we weren't able to keep in the same location because it's too expensive to keep it in the warehouse or whatever, you know. So for Dremio and our customers, you know, our story is simple is, you know, leverage the data where it is. So access data in all sorts of sources, whether it's a Postgres database or an S3 bucket, and don't move the data, don't copy the data, analyze it in place. Um, and don't don't limit the scope of the data you're trying to analyze. If you have new use cases, you have additional data sets that you want to add to those use cases, just bring them into S3 and you are off to the races and you can easily analyze more data and give more power to the end user. So if there's a field that they want to calculate, the simple um, change, convert this miles field to kilometers. Well, the end user should be empowered to just make a calculation on the data like that. That should not require an entire cycle through a data engineering team and a backlog and a ticket and pushing that to you know production and so forth, which in many cases, it does at many organizations. It's, it's a lot of effort to make new calculations on the data or derive new fields add a new column and so forth. So, you know, Dremio makes the data engineer's life easier and more productive. It also makes the data consumer's life much easier and happier, and they can just do their job without worrying about um, and waiting. Um, so. Not only can they do their job, but from a business, a high level perspective, the business is probably has the opportunity to be far more competitive because it's got a bigger scope of data, as you mentioned, access to it more widely, faster. And those are only yeah. good things in terms of- More companies. use cases, more yes. experiments, right? So uh, what I've seen a lot is like, you know, there's no shortage of ideas of what people can do with the data, right? And projects that might be able to be undertaken, but no one knows exactly how valuable that will be, how, you know, whether that's something that should be funded or shouldn't, should not be funded, right? So like more use cases, more experiments, try more things, right? Like if it's cheaper to try these data uh, problems and see if it's valuable to the business, then that's better for the business, right? Ultimately, the business will be more competitive, we'll be able to try more new products, um, we'll be able to have better operational kind of efficiencies, lower risk, you know, all those things. Right. What about data governance? Talk to me about how the Lake House enables that across all these disparate data volumes. Yeah, I think this is where things get really interesting with the Lake House concept relative to where we used to be with a data lake, which was a, a, a parking ground, you know, for just lots of files. And that came with a lot of challenges when you just had a lot of files out there in, in, in a data lake, whether that was HDFS, right, a Hadoop data lake back in the day, or now a cloud storage, object storage, data lake. <laughs> so historically, I feel like governance, um, access, authentication, uh, auditing, all were extremely challenging with the data lake. But now in the modern kind of lake, in the modern lake house world, all, all those challenges have been solved. You have um, great, you know, everything from the front of the house with auth and access policies and data masking, everything that you would expect through commits and tables and transactions and inserts and updates and deletes and, and auditing of that, being able to see, well, who made the changes to the data, which engine, which user, when were they made, you know, and seeing the whole history of a table and not just one, not just a mess of files in, in a file store. Um, so it's, it's really come a long way. I feel like, you know, we're at the, the Renaissance stage of the, you know, 2.0 data lakes or lake houses as people call them. But basically what you're seeing is, a lot of functionality from the traditional warehouse, um, all available in the lake. And warehouses had a lot of governance built in. And whether that was, um, you know, encryption and column access policies and row access policies, so only the right users saw the right data um, or some data masking so that like, you know, the social security was masked out, but the analyst knew it was a social security number, right? That was all there. Now, now that's all available on the lake house. And you don't need to copy data into a data warehouse just to meet those type of requirements. Huge one is um, also deletes, right? Like um, I feel like deletes were one of the Achilles heels of the original data lake when there was no governance and people were just copying data sets around, modifying data sets for whatever their analytics use case was. If someone said, hey, go delete, the you know, right to be forgotten GDPR, now you've got California's CCPA and others all coming online. If you said go delete 
this per, you know this records or set of records from their from a lake original lake i think that was um impossible probably for many people to do it with confidence like to say that like i fully deleted this now um with the apache like iceberg cable format that is stores in the lake house architecture you you actually have delete functionality right which is a is a key component um, that warehouses had traditionally brought to the table. That's a huge component from a compliance perspective. You mentioned GDPR, uh, CCPA, which is going to become CPRA in less than a year. But there's so many other regulations, data privacy regulations that are coming up that the ability to delete that is going to be table stakes for organizations. Something that you guys launched, we just have a couple of minutes left, but you launched, I love the name, the Forever Free Data Lake House platform. That sounds great, Forever Free. Talk to me about what that really means. This is consisting of two products, Sonar and Arctic that you mentioned, but talk to me about this Forever Free Data Lake House. Yeah, I feel like this is this is an amazing step forward in this in the industry. And because of the Dremio cloud architecture where you know the execution uh, and data lives in the customer's cloud account, we're able to basically say, hey, the Dremio software, the Dremio service side of this platform is forever free for users. Now, there is there is a paid tier, but there's a standard tier that is is truly forever free. Now, that, that still comes with um, infrastructure bills from like your cloud provider, right? So if you use AWS, you still have an S3 bill like for your data sets because we're not moving them. They're staying in your Amazon account in your S3 bucket, right? You still do, still have um, to pay for right the infrastructure, the EC2, and the compute to do the data analytics. But the actual software is, is free forever, and there's no one else in our space offering that. At in our space, everything's a free trial. So here's your five hundred dollars of credit. Come try my product. And what we're saying is, you know, with this uh, kind of ar unique architectural approach, um, and this is what I think you know is preferred by customers too. You know, we take care of all the query planning, all the engine management, all the administration of the platform, the upgrades, um, you know, fully available zero downtime platform. So they get all the benefits of SaaS as well as the benefits of maintaining control over their data. And because that data is staying in their account and the execution of the analytics um, is staying in their account, we don't incur that infrastructure bill. So we can have a free forever tier, a forever free tier of our platform. And we've had uh, tremendous adoption. I think we announced this beginning of March, first week of March. So it's not even the end of March. Um, hundreds and hundreds of signups and, and many customers actively or users actively on the platform now, live querying their data. Just kind of summarizes the momentum that Dremio is seeing. Mark, thank you so much. We're out of time, but thanks for talking to me thank you. about what's new at Dremio, what you guys are doing. Next time we'll, we'll have to unpack this even more. I'm sure there's loads more we could talk about, but we appreciate it. Yeah, this was advice. great. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. My pleasure. For Mark Lyons, I'm Lisa Martin. Keep it right here on theCUBE, your leader in high-tech hybrid event coverage.